This is video 11 for a secure cultural landscape assessment. Video 11 talks about adaptive capacity, a very important part of the overall CBI framework. You've seen this framework a number of times. Adaptive capacity is shown in that blue box in the center. And you can see adaptive capacity is a very important part when combined with the potential impact to assess OUV vulnerability. So this video will show you how we do that in terms of adaptive capacity. What is adaptive capacity? Well, adaptive capacity can be seen to be many things. The sort of measures can include things like preventing loss from climate change, perhaps changing the location of some of your facilities or changing the use, or may include restoring damaged facilities. This little diagram across the middle, I think shows well what adaptive capacity might involve. On the left-hand side, we have a little structure against or on the coast with rising sea level impacting. So that's our baseline. As we look at the various options on the right, you can see the first one next to the baseline is about holding the line, building a whole new big structure to keep the sea level rise out. The next one moving across in the middle about reinforcing the area and reclaiming again to keep the water out. The next one moving across, you could actually build up the structure. So when the sea level comes in, it actually moves underneath and doesn't affect the structure. And the last one on the right hand side is talking about actually relocating and what they say managed retreat, actually moving the entire structure away out of the sea level rise. So all these options are possible, but they all cost money. And one of the things we have to consider are the benefits and costs of any adaptive capacity. But I want to stress it's not just about physically moving or building things. It's also about educating and improving planning. It's about changing people's personal habits, changing their behaviour and their expectations to adjust to what's going to happen or to uh, adjust to reduced potential damage. How do we assess adaptive capacity in the CBI? Well, the first thing we've done is we've chosen our three climate stresses. And for each of these climate stresses, we first of all look at the local management capacity. So this is about resources and it's about the sort of budget and the local knowledge available at that local level. And for each of your three climate stresses, you need to assess what's the level of or the capacity to adapt using these resources. Is it, if it's level one, there might be no capacity or no resources available. And as you move up towards level four on the right hand side, the capacity, local capacity increases. As well as local capacity, management capacity, we need to think about the scientific and technical support at the local level. Again, for level one, you may have no scientific or technical support or any scientific understanding of how that climate stressor will impact your values. And as you move across to level two, three and four, the level of support increases. And so at the level four scientific and technical support, you'd have good scientific understanding, good technical support to undertake adaptive capacity. There's a third aspect though, and this is looking at the effectiveness to actually address the particular climate stressor. Remember some of these stresses are very broad and having a very widespread impact. So you might have a management capacity, you might have scientific and technical knowledge, but if it's not gonna effectively address the stressor, then at level one, you might have very low or negligible level of effectiveness. And as you move across levels two, three, and four, the level of effectiveness increases. So the, these are the three assessments we make for each of the three climate stresses to, to determine our level of adaptive capacity. Once we've determined that, we can then apply it in a matrix, looking also at the potential impact. And remember, we've determined the potential impact by looking at both exposure and sensitivity. And then when we put it into a matrix against adaptive capacity here, we can determine what level of OUV vulnerability we have. So these different traffic lights, they are determined from both the adaptive capacity and the potential impact. And we do this for each of the three key stresses, and then we combine these to get the overall OUV vulnerability. This is an example of just that. This is from a report done for a, a property called the Heart of Neolithic Orkney in Scotland. This is an excerpt from that report. Across the top, you can see the three 
climate stresses they chose, sea level change, precipitation change, and storm intensity. And then down the bottom here, you can see the different levels of local management response and scientific technical support. Now, in this case, they gave the same level of local management response to all three stresses and the same level of scientific and technical support. However, given the different stresses, they recognised that for sea level change, the effectiveness was low, whereas for precipitation change and storm intensity, it was a higher, or sorry, in this case, a medium level of effectiveness. So you can see we've ended up with different adaptive capacities in the blue line. And then we take those three adaptive capacities to look at and combine with potential impact to get our three OUV vulnerabilities. And then we combine them into one overall OUV vulnerability for the entire property. It's important to note adaptive capacity is only about the present capacity, looking at the combined values and attributes to mitigate the potential impacts from those three climate stresses. So you should not consider the capacity to adapt that may arise in the future, but we'd like you to document any ideas that you have on your worksheet notes. Thank you.